So Dragonfly DB is a drop-in replacement of Redis, but instead of using regular hash tables to hold the data, it uses something called as dash tables, which are 415 times faster. This is the fourth video in the Dragonfly DB internal series, and let's start with understanding how Redis stores the data. Every dictionary in Redis is not just one hash table, it is it constitutes of two hash tables. One hash table is used in a regular state, while other hash table is used when my hash table is undergoing a rehashing. Now, this is required because Redis does not do an eager rehashing, but it does a lazy rehashing for optimization purposes. A classic case is your rehashing is required because your hash table needs to be expanded because it needs to create space to fit in more items in the hash table right so typically the size is always doubled and it is doubled when my load factor goes above 50 to 75 percent so an average load factor utilization of that is 50 to 100 and hash table is always doubled in size this will come in handy when we are calculating the overhead of it it's going to be a pretty interesting video now each entry each entry in the dictionary in case of redis looks something like this it has a key pointer it has the value that it is holding and an x pointer right so each size the size of dict entry is 8 plus 8 plus 8 which is equal to 24 bytes right now if i assume like if i assume that if i'm holding n elements in my dictionary my bare minimum size that i would require would be 24 into n 24 for each entry and there will be total n entries in it so 24 n entries Right. Now, how is Redis dictionary implemented or hash table is implemented? Hash table is nothing but an array of buckets. Each is a pointer to a linked list. So Redis uses chaining as a way to do conflict resolution. So this is an array of n buckets. And when I'm putting or when I want to insert an element in the hash table, I'll take the key, pass to the hash function, get the array index. And on that index, there will be a linked list of the dict entry right and there i would be putting my dict i would creating a dict entry and putting it over there so i'm using chaining as a way to do conflict resolution right to in my redis dictionary if i compute if i assume a load factor of 100 my total size my total size that my dictionary would take up would be 24 into n which is one for each dict entry for each n element and then 8 byte pointer for n elements that i have over here so my total size would be 32n that I would require. For a load factor of 75, it would be 34n. For a load factor of 50, which means only 50% are filled, my overhead, my total size would be 40n. So if I constitute my overhead per entry, per entry in Redis dictionary, it would be equal to 32 minus 16 or 40 minus 16. Basically, the bare minimum I need to hold the data, which is key and value. Everything else is data structure overhead. So key and the value, key pointer, value pointer, both constitutes of 16, like 8 plus 8, 16. So the overhead is 16 to 24 bytes, right? That is the data structure overhead. Now, during resize, what happens is, obviously, when we're resizing a hash table, because this array is not enough, I would have to resize it. So then I would have to create more entries, creating one more hash table of that size and rehashing it over there. So my overhead for that becomes 16 to 32 bytes which is pretty huge, pretty huge. Now let's understand what Dragonfly DB does. They use something called as dash tables. The overhead of dash tables is six to 16 bytes only as compared to what we observe at 16 to 32 bytes per entry. This is per entry, six to 16 bytes versus 16 to 32 bytes. Pretty dark difference, like pretty stark difference per, per se here. Now, how, what, how are these dash tables implemented? Now this is what we'll dive deep deeper into this and how the insertion works it's pretty amazing algorithm out there so dash table actually holds an array of pointers at the front these are array of pointers now what does this point to each pointer points to a segment this is a segment now consider each segment as a mini hash table so it's basically an array of segments and each segment is actually a hash table of constant size it's not ever growing it's of constant size so each segment is constant size. Right? Now, the whole idea is simple. If each segment, assume my one segment can hold 1000 entries because it is constant size, I would exactly know how many entries it can hold. Assume if it holds 1000 entries, then my length of the front array can be 
can be just n divided by thousand where n is my total entries divided by thousand because each segment can hold thousand entries so my front array which in case of a classic hash table implementation was pretty high here it's literally n by 1000 so thus my dash table implementation consists of is basically an array of segment and segment is an array of dict entry we'll go into deeper on what this dict entry is right? There's an oversimplified version of it where we go into the nuances in a couple of minutes. So now how insert works. The insert works in a very simple way. When I want to insert in my dash table, I would take the key, hash it, find the segment where it needs to go to. Basically, take the key, hash it, take the key, hash it, figure out where it needs to go to. In that corresponding segment, I would try to insert. If I'm able to fit into that segment, all good. Right? I would complete my insertion. If the segment is full, remember segment is fixed size. If my segment is full, I will split the segment and add that new segment to the array again. And I would re rehash it and try to reinsert it again. That's the whole idea. Right? Now, how, what's like, why this splitting, what's the performance gain over here? The core idea that it plays with is that in a classic hash table implementation, Whenever I'm resizing my hash table, I would have to rehash all the elements. In worst case, I would require to move all the elements across the new hash table, right? So I would require, in the worst case, I would require a complete movement of all the items that are then my hash table, old hash table to the new hash table. But on the other hand, in the dash table, I'm only affecting the segment that was full creating a new segment out of it and then just the elements present in this segment are getting affected there is a minimal data movement which is required this is the main performance benefit that you get out of it right now how is each segment implemented each segment consists of buckets each segment has two types of buckets one is regular bucket second is stash, bu stash buckets 56 regular buckets and 4 stash buckets. Each bucket has 14 slots. So these are buckets and each bucket has 14 slots. So total 840 slots in my bucket. Now imagine each slot to be able to hold one key value pair, right? Which is what we saw in dict entry, very similar to that. So total number of entries that I can hold is 840 in each segment. This is a fixed size segment. Now, how does insert work in the segment? We saw insert work in hash table where we just said it will insert in the segment and now going deeper into how the insertion happens at the segment level. So whenever I'm trying to insert a particular key in my dash table or in my segment, now at the segment level, what would happen is I would find one of the home buckets. How would I find? Again, passing through the hash function mod 56, I'll find a home bucket for it to reside. If that bucket is full, I will go to the next bucket, the bucket next to it. Right? If second bucket is full, I will put it in the stash bucket. Right? That's the whole idea. So I'm not trying to find the first available slot across. I'm just looking at very minimal places where I can find it. Right? If my stash bucket also is filled, I will trigger a split of the segment. That's where I would know that my segment is full. Because it means that there is a, like there is less space and more items to be added. So it's a trigger point for me to split the segment and just trigger a rehashing of those elements affected by it right i'm stating it again how the insertion happens in the segment in segment we first find the home bucket where it's present like again passing to the hash function mod 56 find the first free free slot in the bucket how would i do it open addressing not chaining open addressing so find the first available slot where i can fit in if first bucket is filled the home bucket is filled i'll go to the next bucket if the next bucket is also filled, I'll go to the stash bucket and if stash bucket is filled, I'll, trigger, I'll say that insertion cannot happen. Please trigger, please trigger the split of the segment, right? That's how the insertion works at the segment level. Now, why, why, like, what is an advantage of doing this? This looks like complicated approach, but to be honest, it's much simpler to implement. The key advantage of this is, first of all, by limiting the number of buckets we are trying to insert home bucket, the next bucket and the stash bucket. We are not just going across, like doing large number of lookups to find the first available slot. We are giving it enough chances to find. If not, it means that our segment is quote unquote full and we should trigger a split of the segment. 
right so we are quick to decide that our segment needs to be split right one segment so on an average if you assume because each segment holds 840 80 so rough assumption of that is one segment split will happen every thousand new insertions which is a fair assumption right? second and the biggest advantage of this is no complete rehashing of your table is required in case of a classic hash table implementation when my hash table was resized to its double size i would have to rehash everything from my first array to the second array for all items now here only the segment that is split is getting affected that's the best part so most elements in dash table implementation stay at the same place while in a classic hash table implementation they are moved right this is where you get better throughput and the overhead of dash table because of its fixed size implementation and less overhead of managing a lot of pointers is that the overhead of this is just 6 to 16 bytes. That's the beauty of it. Now, if we look at the benchmark, like, okay, this is all theoretical. Let's look at the benchmark. So for 20 million rows, when they were inserting, this is taken from the uh, Dragonfly DB's documentation. The time it took for Dragonfly DB to insert is 2.43 seconds versus Redis 6 took 16 seconds. The memory consumption of Dragonfly was just 896 MB, while Redis was 1.73 GB. You see the stark difference in that. Right? And if you observe at the log scale, now this graph, the second graph is plotted at log scale, right? So all that looks linear, but it is actually exponential, right? Because it is a log scale plot. So if you observe the latency, the average latency, the P99, the P99.9 .9, and max latency, here we clearly see that how much faster is dash table as compared to Redis dictionary. Redis dictionary is very slow. On the other hand, dash tables are lightning fast, 415 times faster. Right? But you see one anomaly. That anomaly is at P99.9 .9 because this is where at P99.9 .9, .9, there is a slight anomaly that comes in and this happens because every 1000 insertion Right? Your segment split happens. But what is being trade off here? What is being trade off here is the fact that you would have much lesser max latency by trading off slightly higher P99.9 .9 latency, which is better when we are taking a massive dump of data or a snapshot, which is why you see a consistent snapshotting performance in case of dash, uh, in case of Dragonfly as compared to Redis. This is such a beautiful implementation of a core data structure of an in-memory key value store like Dragonfly. Right? This is why I absolutely loved going through the Dragonfly DB's documentation, blogs, and even a bit of source code. Right? So I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to please check out Dragonfly DB source code. It's amazing. It's beautifully written, right? Dragonfly DB is on source code and all the relevant links are in the description and in the pinned comment down below. Please go ahead, explore. It's really fascinating on how small decisions here and there can make your database go berserk, like get the max out of your underlying hardware. And again, it's extremely fun going through Dragonfly. Highly recommended to check that out. And yeah, this was the fourth video in the series. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.